he's scared. You're just walking while your body's dying at a very slow, slow, slow rate. From our team, we started off as 17 climbers and then only six of us made it to the top. It stands out a lot because I'm 20 years old and I'm a woman from Tanzania climbing Everest. Like, the pieces don't fit together at all. I want to show people that sometimes the pieces don't really need to fit for you to achieve your dream. What I say is everyone has their own Everest. If it's what you want, you can go after it. It doesn't matter how old you are, it doesn't matter your race, it doesn't matter your gender, it doesn't matter whatever it is. If it's what you want, you can go for it. Everest ain't got shit on me. <laughs> I was actually very privileged to be born and raised in Tanzania and Kilimanjaro is like two hours away from my house. At school, there's an outdoor program and they take you on different levels. Uh, so level one through five and level five would be the summit Kilimanjaro. I was in Nepal for a total of three months for my climb for Everest. You start something called your rotations when you move up to the mountain. And so we do three rotations. And so on our first rotation, you go to from Everest Base Camp to Camp 1, spend the night in Camp 1, move to Camp 2, spend two nights in Camp 2, and then you come all the way back down to Base Camp. You're getting used to, again, the altitude. So this is we do this for acclimatization purposes. You reach to Camp 2, which is like almost 6,800, and usually that's a really new height for people. People don't really use, reach that height before coming to Everest, so you get a chance to feel the altitude, understand how your body works, see what's good, what's not, because for every person, your body reacts completely different. And then you go back to base camp and you start your second time of uh, rest, and so that's another four days. So today's dinner, Mexican style, chicken stew with this view and then we start our second rotation which we go all the way to camp three so camp three is seven thousand meters and that was the first time i reached that altitude in my life and it was like really hard because you don't have oxygen on that rotation and so you're climbing up like a wall that's <laughs> let's say 45 degrees and it's ice and you're climbing without oxygen so that was super hard oh it's good and then you go all the way back down to base camp after camp three. <laughs> and then you start your summit rotation. And so you go back to base camp, you prepare your oxygen, your oxygen mask, make sure it fits. And then you go back up and then this time you go to camp two, camp three, camp four, summit and then back down. That zone, first of all, is anything above 8,000 meters. And so that would be the base of Camp Fort. And then your whole summit is in the death zone. You're just walking while your body's dying at a very slow, slow, slow rate. The lack of oxygen just starts to kill your organs very slowly and you have to try make it to the top and back down and out of the death zone into a place where oxygen is back into your body. I can't even explain the view to you, like it's beyond amazing. It's amazing to feel like so small in a world so big. It's a really hard thing to explain to someone who hasn't been there. 
So when you get to the top, it's not like, okay, I got to the top and I look around and it looks amazing and then that's the end of the journey. No, that's only halfway there. I still have to go all the way back down. Most of the time you're thinking, okay, now I have to go back, now I have to go back, I want to get back safely. And so you don't really digest your accomplishment until way after you got, you're off the mountain. On the way down, I was singing a, a song. So like the whole time down, I was like, not ever sing got sh on me. <laughs> I remember like I came to base camp, we called me and my family and we all just started to cry. It was so funny. <laughs> Like, we were just, because we're six in the family, it was just six of us on a video call crying. <laughs> I knew Tanzania was supporting me all along my climb, but when I came back and I saw how the government actually like prepared and they were posting about me and everyone basically knew who I was or what I did, it was like, wow, people actually look up to me or like believe in me and it actually felt really, really good. I think more than the summit itself, coming back down and seeing the support you get, it's like, it's really nice. <laughs> It's nice to think that I've, I have done an impact on the world. If it's what you want, you can go after it. It doesn't matter how old you are, it doesn't matter your race, it doesn't matter your gender, it doesn't matter whatever it is. You can achieve whatever you want. <laughs>